As you can see, I have a pretty significant transmission leak or leaks. Um, so I'm going to have to investigate that. Uh, you know, I suspect it's the front seal for the transmission. Um, also potentially where the speedometer cable goes in. So it could be the speedometer cable as well. Um, also uh, where the dipstick tube goes into the transmission, that could be another source as well. Um, obviously it could be the pan too. Um, so I'm gonna get under there and do a little bit of investigating. All right, so I ended up pressure washing underneath the car and uh, mainly the main focus obviously was the transmission and under the engine. Uh, I needed to find out where all the transmission fluid is coming from. So it sat for a week already and I just got under there and looked at it and it looks like it's coming off of the pan off of some of the it looks it's a little wet around the bolts for the transmission pan and also it looks like it's wet around where there's a sensor that that goes into the side of the transmission near the pan um, so it looks like it's potentially leaking there as well so i gotta investigate that once i drop the pan so um, what i ended up doing is i uh, picked up a transmission filter gonna need to do that anyways um, this has the gasket and everything for the pan and then I picked up uh, two gallons of transmission fluid so I'm gonna go ahead and get that pan dropped and uh, see what it looks like I'm not sure if this transmission fluid when the last time it was changed again cars been in the desert for 30 years this could be 30 year old transmission fluid who knows gonna find out right now you can see a uh, transmission pan there. Get a close up of it. And you can see this, this cool drain container. It's about the same size. So um, I'm gonna get to work on this and let's see what it looks like under the pan. I'm a Chevy guy, so this is all new to me. This, uh, they call the Torque Command Transmission, which is basically a Chrysler Torque Flight Transmission. Look at that, boy. Never seen nothing like that before. Not good. Nothing like having transmission fluid splash in your hair. That looks disgusting. Wow. Look at that.
looks pretty bad so all right so i suspect that i got water in my transmission just by looking at the color of the transmission fluid also i opened up the p cap at the bottom of the radiator and guess what nothing came out so <laughs> so story of my life so what i'm going to go ahead and do is i'm going to go ahead and take the radiator out and uh, there's a local shop here in town and uh, they'll go ahead and go through my radiator they did the same thing for the monte carlo even though i ended up buying a aftermarket replica um, because the one that came in the car was only a three core um, so anyways so i'm gonna go ahead and take this radiator out and i'm going to deliver to the shop so sorry guys man so frustrating stay tuned <laughs> all right and get the get this radiator off. Looks like there's a couple of bolts that are holding it in. probably do is take the well I guess it doesn't matter I was gonna take the lower radiator hose off yeah I, I sure <laughs> we get under there and take that off real quick yeah I'll put you guys down here with me so you could see what I gotta do here got the lower radiator hose and these are the transmission cooler lines so uh, I really should get these off before I start ripping that radiator out. <laughs> uh, yeah, I should have done that. Oh boy. Oh, just an old piece of the old radiator cap. Yep, I should have taken this off before. Because this hose is already kind of baked on. I'm going to get a screwdriver and pull it off. It'll come right out. There we go. Well, that's interesting. Oh, but that's coming out of the motor. I was going to say, I didn't get any... No water came out of the radiator, but yeah, definitely stuff in the motor. Yeah, this looks like rust water to me from the block. Whoa. I think this will be telling here if I take these lines out and see what comes out. If oil comes out or if uh, water comes out. Or fluid, I should say. Transmission fluid. So one thing to note about all this as well is regarding water and the transmission. It could just be a little pinhole leak in the transmission that's just barely spraying water in there. That's causing the, the water to be foamy and milky like it is. So it doesn't have to be a, a major leak. So um, that's one thing to consider about all this. But this, this may be telling when I get this loosened up here. Um, you know, these are probably, these fittings are probably, have never been taken off. Um, since the car was put together in a factory. So this is going to be interesting. Loosen this stuff up. Ah. Ah, there we go. So I suspect this is going to have fluid. Transmission fluid coming out. Hopefully not water. We're going to find out right now. Again, these are the transmission fluid cooling lines here going right into the radiator. Okay, look at that, milky. 
milky, which tells me, yeah, it's definitely, there's a leak going on there somewhere. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow these lines out with air. Um, but for now, obviously, I'm just, I'm just taking these off. So I can get this radiator out. Go. Right, same deal over here. Got to get a little catch can for this side. I'll toss it over the strain panel. Well, there you go. Look at that. It goes right in the drain pan. Anyways. So yeah, we got all this milky fluid here. So I'm gonna. Just let that drip there. So this is what the one side looks like that already took the bolts off. This is the other side, pretty similar. So I've got these bolts here. There's one here and there's another down there. There's probably three. And really, this is going to solve the mystery, you know, with this stuff that's sprayed all over the place a, a while back. This is going to solve everything because we will know positively that the radiator is sealed and doesn't have any leaks. So, so this is better anyways. I was thinking of doing this, but I guess I was just a little overly optimistic that... Um, it was going to be all right. So anyways, um, in theory, it should be cheaper just to repair this radiator than me to spend, you know, four or 500 bucks for a new one. I don't mind buying a new one, you know, um, new, maybe high performance one, aluminum or something like that. Um, but I'll, I'm going to wait until, um, I get the motor redone. You know, I'm I'm actually considering putting a 401 in here. I don't remember if I mentioned that in any of the other videos. So if I do not go with a 401, uh, I will stroke this 360 if I can find the uh, connecting rods, right? Um, and uh, a stroke kit, basically. Um, so, um, so we'll see. Right, so that's off. Another thing too, it says Blackstone on the radiator. I'm assuming that's just an aftermarket brand. I'll have to look it up and see if that is the case. See, check that out. <laughs> this is how I know this has been off. They got a washer, then a nut, and then the bolt. So yeah, that's a big time uh, rigging right there. I might need another set of hands. <sighs> Stuff everywhere, but it's out. Well, there we go. Yeah. All right, Matthew. Thank you. Okay. I'll just put these on here. All right, so got the radiator taken out. So I'm gonna take this in and have them go through it and uh, see what we find out. 
So I appreciate y'all watching. Please like and subscribe. Sorry it's taking me so long. It's a one-man show. Ah.